BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Skills Mean and Standard Deviation. Now, hopefully, you can work out the mean of a set of values by now. The mean is just the average value. You add them up and then you divide by how many that there are. That's the average. Okay. A student measures the temperature rise in an experiment three times and gets those values. Calculate the mean. So get your calculator out, get it done, and the mean is 5.6. Be careful with how many decimal places you use. In general, it should match the data that you're given. Again, common sense, but calculating the mean is dead easy. Now, consider this. Here are two football teams. And if you worked out the average height uh, for these two teams, now the average height would be the same. But what's the difference? Okay, now look at the two diagrams. The average height is the same, but what's the difference between them? Uh, another one, uh, two students do an experiment and each of them takes five sets of readings. Uh, and again, the average value, the mean value for student A's results and student B's results is the same. If you work it out, you'll see that it's the same. But what's the difference? Look at student A's results. Look at student B's results. What is the difference? And the answer is that there is a much bigger spread. OK, there's a smaller variation uh, in student A's results and there's a smaller variation of height in the first football team and then there's a bigger variation in student B's results and in the, the second football team. There is a bigger spread in the data. There's a bigger variation. The standard deviation. Imagine we did an experiment many times and got lots of results and then calculated the mean. Now, the standard deviation tells us the spread of the results, how close the results are to the mean. If you look at these two diagrams, the first one, there is a small standard deviation. On the second one, there's a much bigger standard deviation. There's a bigger spread of results. The smaller the standard deviation, then the less uncertainty there is in our results. If the closer to the average, then we know that they're probably, uh, well, more accurate. How do we work out the standard deviation? Well, we use this Greek letter sigma. Okay, don't worry too much about that, but that's the symbol that we use for standard deviation. And this is the equation, which looks a bit smelly when you first see it for the first time, but it's actually pretty straightforward. This is how we work out the standard deviation, okay? So you calculate the mean value. That's the x bar. That, that means the mean value. Bar above it means the average. So work out the mean value. Then for each of the results, calculate the difference between it and the mean, okay? So the difference between each result and the mean, and then square it. By squaring it, that means if it's uh, positive or negative, it doesn't matter because if you square a negative number, it turns out positive. So for each value, calculate the difference between it and the mean and then square it and then divide it by, uh, well, add them all up. That's the, the sigma. That's this thing here, sigma. That means add them all up, the sum of. Add them all up and then divide it by n minus 1. N is the number of values. So if there were five values, you'd divide it by four. So add them up, divide by N minus one, and then get the square root of all of that. And that will tell you the standard deviation. Here's an example for you to have a go at. Calculate the standard deviation of these values. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values there. Um, you could do it on a spreadsheet, but obviously you won't be able to do that in the exam. So you work out the mean, you work out the difference between each value and the mean. You square it, you divide by, well, you divide by six, 
you'd add them up and then divide by six and then get the square root and there you go and that's my answer there okay so my standard deviation is 0 0.23 your calculator is very clever if you're good at maths and if you're brave you could figure out how to get your calculator to work out standard deviation for you and it could work out a few other things as well and there are some YouTube clips showing you how to do it with your calculator if you're not super confident with using a calculator then just do it by hand it's as in don't use the complex functions on your calculator okay here's an example for you to have a go at a pupil measures how long it takes a kettle to boil and gets these times in seconds calculate the mean and the standard deviation so pause the video and do it and the answer is you should get a mean of 285 seconds and a standard deviation of 9.31 okay another pupil gets a mean of 291 and a standard deviation of 5.2 comment on the, their results which, which pupil do you reckon did the experiment better more accurately I reckon it was the second one because they have a smaller standard deviation their results are all closer together when you plot a graph you can express the uncertainty uh, by doing error bars on your graph this is something that you should be able to do so you do error bars on your graph and it's basically for each point it's plus and minus the standard deviation if you haven't estimated the error in any other way then you can use the standard deviation as a measure of the uncertainty and you do these error bars and then if you've done them correctly the line or the curve should go through all of the error bars okay you can do these candlestick things on a bar chart but to be honest I've never seen them done on this exam